Hi, this is Kara, and this is DIY on the House. If you are new to DIY on the House, then you are in for a treat because I am sort of obsessed right now with rug weaving. If you want, are one of our followers, you'll be happy to know I am addressing one of the super common questions is, can you use t-shirts to weave a rug? So you've guessed today's video is going to be using t-shirts and knit fabric to weave a rug. What we use are looms um, that have metal rods on the side of them. And these metal rods slide into these eyes um, that are on each side of the loom and they keep your uh, rug square. So you're going to be weaving in this direction, weave around the rod and back and forth. These rods are super important to keeping a nice square rug. On the bottom of each loom, there are finishing nails. It doesn't matter um, how many nails there are, just have them be a half inch apart and the same number of nails on the bottom as on the top. But I'm not gonna go into a whole bunch of detail on the loom because we have an entire video. My husband, Ross, put together a really good video step-by-step -step on how you can make uh, this loom. So the link is down below. The, the loom that I'm using here is about 18 inches by 33 inches long. The nails on each end, there's 33 on each end and they are gapped a half inch a piece. And then the rods are eighth inch steel rods that you can get in the fastener department at the hardware store. And so, um, like I said, watch the video and you can learn how to make the loom. But today I'm going to see if there is a positive or a negative answer on can you use t-shirts to weave a rug okay so when it comes to making a rug i have made numerous rugs out of cotton fabric and i've made it out of string i've made it out of plush blankets they are really really durable they each have a backing on the back of them they're totally washable but one of the questions i get all of the time is can you use knits so today i have knit uh, fabric that i found at the thrift store this is super stretchy fabric this is four and two thirds yards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what quantities I'm starting with. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you what I ended up using. That is probably the second most common question is how much fabric you need. So to start with, I am starting with about four yards of knit that I'm going to use for the warp. And I'll show you that in a second. And I have already cut four adult t-shirts and one child t-shirt into strips. I didn't rip these. I went ahead and used my rotary cutter and scissors uh, to cut them into about an inch and a half strips. Some are a little wider, some are a little narrower. That is just fine. So again, I have four adult t-shirts, a child t-shirt, and about four yards of fabric. All of them I have already cut into my inch and a half strips. When you start, you need a continuous strip of fabric. So we need to join enough fabric to warp back and forth all the way across. So when you're warping, you're not gonna wanna have to stop and join your fabric. So I have already joined all of these together and I'm gonna show you here how you do that. So I have, this is the piece from my ball and this is a strip that still needs to be attached. You lay them on top of each other you fold them over about an inch, take scissors and put a little half inch snip there between that goes through both pieces. So now you put your finger here and your finger there, lay them on top of each other and bring the tail in the opposite side and pull it through and now you have joined it together. So again, I've joined enough fabric to go back and forth all the way across. Depending on the size loom you have, take the, dist or the length of the loom times two and times the number of nails that you have on the end and that'll give you approximately how many inches of warping that you need. So we are going to warp back and forth. To get started, 
you need to take your fabric and you need to tie a loop in this end. And I warn you, I am uh, as much crafting as I do, I'm not a very good knot tire. So I just tie a knot here, there. So I have a loop and I, you just put that on your first nail. And so I am going to be really curious. I have made, like I said, I've made rugs out of almost all different kinds of fabric. I have not warped out of knit. So we are going to see together how this turns out. So you pull it nice and tight. The part that I do like so far about the knit is there's no um, fraying, there's no stragglers. It is messy. Um, a lot of little uh, blue pieces are falling on my carpet, but the strings are not there that you get in uh, cotton. So you just go back and forth, keeping it nice and tight. And so there, there is the knot that I just did. That's fine. That's exactly what you want to have. And you're going to go back and forth until you get to the end. Okay, I am down to my last nail, and you need to tie another loop, just like we did at the beginning. We need to tie a loop here. So I'm gonna give myself plenty of tail. Okay, so I've cut my tail, and I'm just gonna tie a knot here, and it always slips on me, but we'll make it work. There we go, not so bad. Okay, so, so far, I am not seeing a whole bunch of difference using knit on this. I am really uh, pleased of the not having the, the strings in the frame. So I'll be really um, excited to see what this looks like to get together. So now I'm gonna change the camera and get it set up so that we can start weaving and show you how you can start making your t-shirt rug. Okay, this is where the magic starts to happen. I have my loom set up in front of me. I'm just sitting on a chair. I usually have it leaning against an object uh, so that it's right in front of me. As I move down the project, I set it up on like a milk crate so that my project is always up in front of me. And I have put my rods in the sides. So you put your uh, steel rods down the edge. Again, it's important to have the rods so that you keep nice square corners and nice straight edges. And the link uh, to the video on how to make the loom is down below. I have the four adult t-shirts already cut into strips. Some of it has writing on it. I stuck with uh, white t-shirts that had black or gray writing. And so my color palette, I'm using green t-shirts, white t-shirts, and then the blue knit uh, that I found at the thrift store. So at the end of the video, I'll let you know how many t-shirts it took to make the rug. So I'm just gonna start with just one color. And to start, you, you weave around the rods as if that is a part of your fabric, as, that is a, as if that's a part of your warping. So you take one strip and you put one end in between your first warp. So underneath the nail, split the hole with a finger and bring up one tail of your t-shirt. You take the other tail and you go down that same hole and while you're behind there, you're not gonna be able to see my finger, but you're going to come up the next hole of your warping. So we, on the one that's in this hand, I've went down and I've come back up. So then you take your, the tail that is up and you go in and bring it up your next warp. You take this tail that just came up, you go in, and you come back up this one. This one goes in and this one goes up. So now I'm going to go ahead and weave across and get to a point where I need to add another t-shirt to my weaving fabric. There we go, so here we have a tail I am finding a couple differences in using knit. Again, I've done cotton, I've done polyester, I've done string, I've done uh, yarn. This is my first go with knit. A couple different things I'm noticing. Since there's give in the warp, the warp 
tends to want to pop off of the nails. So I'm just gonna make sure I keep my eye on the nails and make sure that none of that is popping off. And I'm also noticing that it is gripping to each other. That if I'm weaving with cotton or old sheets or old uh, polyester, I can go two or three rows and then I can slide up to make sure it's nice and tight. This is gripping to each other and uh, I'm going to make sure that I slide it up nice and tight after each row. So I'm to the end of this tail. Again, to join them, you just lay one piece on top of the other, fold it over about an inch, snip it about a half inch, lay them on top of each other and pull through the opposite side. I did leave on the ribbings, um, but I and here's a neck ribbing, so I left that on. I am going to cut off any tags um, that are on the t-shirts as I come to them. So now I'm gonna continue. See there, that one tried to come off. So you just need to keep your eye on the warp and make sure that it's not gonna slip off on you. Okay, I'm down to the end here, and again, we have to go around this rod. I've come up with the white, and I need to go down through the next warp hole, and I go under the rod and come back up. So when I come around, I need to go back in that same hole and come back up the next hole. So we have went around the back, through and back up. Now this one, has come forward, it needs to go around and come back up the same hole. Something that I've done different on this rug video, I have uh, wove and moved the camera um, different angles. So I'm gonna put together just a few different clips of different angles so that you can see how this all goes together. Okay, so I hope those, uh, those clips were helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and continue uh, weaving this. And um, I, at the, another question that I get all of the time is how long does it take to weave a rug? I am going to keep track of this one. Once we go off camera and I really get um, weaving, I'm gonna kind of keep mental track of how long it took to weave it. And I'm going to keep track of the quantity of t-shirts um, that it took to make the rug. So again, this rug is about 18 inches by 33 inches. And uh, 
I am really excited to see how it turns out. Okay, this is a true first. At this point in the video, usually I'm super excited. I can't wait to show you how cool this is turning out. But right now there's a big old question mark. I do not know if this rug is gonna turn out. The blue warp fabric that I used is pretty thick, so it created a lot of bulk in the rug. So I'm gonna show you what uh, challenges I have and show you how to finish it off. And together, we're gonna to find out if this was a success or a fail. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Usually at this point, this is nice and smooth, it's super tight, and um, you can tell that it's gonna be a really cool rug. I think it's still gonna be a really cool rug, but look at all of this excess bulk in here. So usually, I am able to crunch things down, get it nice and tight, knit is grabbing on each other so I can't move it down like I usually do which I don't think is quite um, gonna be too much of a problem but also I need to have enough give left up here so when I take it off of the nails it will hopefully spread out and be smooth so I am leaving about an inch here to do my final row where usually I just do about a half inch so I'm gonna show you how to finish off So to finish off I use a crochet hook I have my tails here ready to go across. We're gonna continue the weaving motion. The difference now is you're going to weave in between the warp underneath the nail and go all the way across. The, um, the problem is if you don't go in between this and you just keep weaving and then you pull off your uh, rug off of your nails, all of your rows will come off. So this is basically locking your row into place. So you're gonna just continue. You're going to bring this one back and this one has to come around the uh, rod and come through the warp the opposite direction that you just went with the green. And put your crochet hook from the back, bring it forward and bring back your white. Do the opposite and bring forward the green. I'll do a couple more here and then finish off the row and together, like I said, we're gonna find out how happy we are with this project. Okay, I've went across and I'm down to my last uh, nail here. So I'm gonna do the same motion, bring forward and back, but then I'm going to come back and do it again on two more nails just to secure it, sort of like back stitching in uh, sewing. So I'm just gonna back stitch here just a little bit. So there's one. I'll bring this one forward. The t-shirt knit is really easy to work with. I'm finding that the knit uh, from that I bought in the yardage, it's a little thick, but the t-shirt is really cool. So I brought this forward to finish it off. I'm just gonna tie a really tight knot. And I'm gonna um, have about four inch tails here and going to weave them back into a couple of the rows to hide them. And now this is uh, gonna be pretty simple because this the t-shirt stuff really does work well. So providing that the rug comes off this loom, the t-shirt is a success. But we'll see here in just a second. So I go down a little and I come back up a little just so we have that wove through and hidden. This little tail here is from my original knot, so I'm just gonna cut that off. I had um, included the tail in my last row there, so it was hidden. And I'll leave just about a half inch tail and I think we are about ready to take out the rods and see if it works. Okay, the moment of truth. But before I get to that, 
I had uh, promised that I would tell you how many hours it took. After I turned off the camera and started weaving, it took only about four hours uh, to do the weaving. So it is a lot faster because there are a lot less rows. They, they don't bunch together real tight. So about four hours. I, would, I started with four adult t-shirts and a child's t-shirt. I could say you probably could get by with three um, t-shirts total. Uh, if you are using something else for the warping. If you're using t-shirts for the warping, uh, you would have to have quite a bit more. The warping, the blue that I used for the warping and then included it throughout, I used about two and a half yards of that. So I, uh, I was pretty spot on on what I had prepared. So three or four t-shirts uh, for the weaving and two and a half yards of knit for the warping. And now we get to pull out our rods. My hope is when I pull these off of the nails that we are going to have our bumps even out. Oh my word, I think we have success. The bumps um, did all even out. It's still nice and square on the edges. This is the last row. So um, as I had hoped, the uh, rows are evening out so I can just pull that and hide the loops from that were around your nail but oh my word this is so super thick so i'm going to give this one a total thumbs up i would totally do this rug over and over again it is nice it's um, going to wash well the next step is to put a backing on it and uh, I wanted to hurry and get this video up because I had a lot of questions about t-shirts and I didn't order the backing in time to put backing on this particular rug. So here is a clip from a previous video on how to put the backing on the rug because these things are super slippery. Uh, you do need to do the backing. I order it from Amazon. Um, it's just the, the foam shelf liner. You can also find it at Walmart. So uh, here is how you can put a backing on your rug. Okay, the last thing we need to do is we need to put a backing on the rug. They are pretty slippery. We have a uh, laminate floor, and so this is my go-to. This is the foam shelf liner. Uh, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it at Walmart. Th they come in two different widths, and so just find one that is the right width. So yeah. you just take your backing, and lay it, you don't need to go corner to corner. This is just to give it a little bit of a, a cushion. So this is roughly a hand away on all edges. So I am going to cut it a hand away on this edge and just follow one of their lines. Then it's best uh, to pin it in a few places. It doesn't need to be super secure. I have taken these on uh, road trips, pin a whole bunch of them ahead of time, and then just slip stitch them while we're driving. In that case, you want them pinned really well, but if you're going to be working on a relatively flat surface, just a pin in each corner, um, and then one on each long side should be sufficient. Then you just take a needle and thread and start, start slip stitching, which um, is just basically going around and around the edge of your shelf liner and uh, securing the back to your new rug. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and uh, show you the final product. Okay, I am giving a t-shirt rug a total thumbs up. I am astounded. I think if uh, you wanted to, you could do warping with t-shirts. It would just uh, create a lot of joining them together. But please check out our future videos. I am working on a rug that is using rope and twine because I wanted a welcome mat. So we're gonna see how that one works out. I also have a video in the works on washing these. These are totally washable, but I am doing a before and after what they look like when I put them in the washer and what they come out like so that uh, we can all be confident that they wash up good. So as always, thank you for watching DIY on the house and check back for more videos.